Students, please rise and face the center aisle as the faculty and the president's party proceed to the stage. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Victor Fisher, an associate professor in the Department of Sociology, Anthropology, and Criminal Justice. As Grand Marshal, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the spring commencement exercises for the College of Liberal Arts. Madam President, the university community is assembled for commencement. I would like to introduce Dr. Marvin Lusky the 13th president of Towson University. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you. And especially good afternoon to our graduating class of 2013. <laughs> I welcome you to the 140 eighth commencement in the proud history of this university. Isn't that amazing? 148. My goodness. Today we celebrate you as our newest graduates and your significant academic achievement. Oh my goodness, we have been so proud to guide and mentor you and help you along this transformational journey. It has really been our pleasure. I want you to think for just 15 seconds about what you remember about your first or second day here. Maybe your first tour, orientation, your first English class, 
your first time in the student union, trying to get around campus, and in your mind you had that this day would come. And now here it is. We are thrilled to have been a part of it. Now, everyone, please stand for the national anthem, and we're going to be led in the singing by Mr. Eric Engel, who's going to graduate with a Bachelor of Science in English today. Please be seated. At this time, I would like to pause for a moment of silence in honor of the faculty, staff, and students who have passed away during this year. Students Kelsey Allen, Devin Spence, Asan Mahmood, and Ryan Bailey, and staff member Larry Long, and for all of those who lost their lives in the Oklahoma tornado. A moment of silence, please. Thank you. The flags on display behind me represent the 29 countries of the 70 international students graduating from Towson University this spring. Also on stage are flags representing the 77 nations of our current total international population of 570 students. We are so pleased to have each and every one of you in our Towson family. As you can see, an education at Towson University not only serves our region in the state of Maryland, but around the globe. In addition to the international flags, you will notice a number of graduates and faculty and staff wearing black and gold pins signifying their support of the Tiger Commencement Pledge. This pledge is a voluntary commitment to be more active in our communities and to work for positive change in social and environmental conditions. I now call upon Kevin Kuttner, our newly elected Vice President of the Student Government Association, to introduce representatives from the university's various boards. Kevin? Thank you, Madam President. Ladies and gentlemen, we are fortunate this morning to welcome University System of Maryland Regent Thomas Slater Esquire. The Board of Regents is a group of respected and prestigious professionals appointed by the governor to oversee quality, affordability, and accessibility to Maryland institutes of higher education. Mr. Slater was appointed to the Board of Regents in July 2007. He is the founder and principal partner of the law firm Slater & Slater and is also a former Frederick County public school teacher. Mr. Slater obtained his BA from Frostburg State, an MA from the George Washington University, and a JD from the University of Baltimore School of Law. He is actively engaged in his alma mater, having served on Frostburg's Board of Visitors, Alumni Association, and Foundation Boards. 
He is also a past recipient of the Frostburg State University Alumni Achievement Award. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Regent Thomas Slater Esquire. Thank you, Kevin, and good afternoon. I am delighted to join you and extend best wishes from the University System of Maryland on behalf of the Board of Regents on this exciting day. It's an honor to share this occasion with your president, Marvin Leschke, who is doing a tremendous job leading Towson University. Under her leadership, Towson is expanding its role as a regional leader, both economically and culturally, making Towson University a vibrant hub for the entire great, greater Baltimore community. Towson is clearly an institution of choice for many of Maryland's brightest students. I know even greater strides remain. It is also a great pleasure to be here in this wonderful new Tiger Arena. But most importantly, it's an honor to be here to recognize and congratulate you, the members of the graduating class of 2013. What you have accomplished has taken hard work, persistence, and dedication. Today, we celebrate the completion of your journey. I know your family and friends take a great deal of pride in what you have accomplished. They have shared in your sacrifice and certainly should share in your success today. No matter what direction your life now takes, no matter what challenges you will next confront, know that your education here has prepared you well. Towson also takes justifiable pride in serving as an integral part of the social, cultural, and intellectual life of the community. The ethic of service runs deep within the Towson community. I hope you will continue to honor that tradition. Once again, congratulations to all of you, and know that the entire University System of Maryland family wishes you all the best in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Regent Slater. This afternoon, we are also pleased to have with us two members of the university's Board of Visitors, Mr. Ted Zaleski and Mrs. Molly Schock, who will be delivering remarks to the graduating class. The Board of Visitors is a group of professionals who advise and guide our president. Mrs. Schock is a 1975 graduate of Towson University. She has given generously of her time and talent to the university. Mrs. Schock's late husband, Stephen, received a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration in 1974. After his death in 2002, she and her sons established a scholarship in the College of Business and Economics and in the College of Liberal Arts. She has served on Towson's Board of Visitors since 2005 and also serves as the president of Towson University Foundation. Please welcome Mrs. Molly Schock. Thank you, Kevin. Good afternoon, President Lusky, Provost Chandler, distinguished guests, honored faculty, parents, and graduates. On behalf of the Board of Visitors, I bring you greetings and best wishes. The Board is composed of alumni, business, and civic leaders. We act as a sounding board and advisory panel to the President and serve at her pleasure. Our goal, that Towson remain a growing, thriving university. Whether you are here on the four-year plan, the five-year plan, the seven-year plan, the ten-year plan, <laughs> celebrate today, revel in your achievement, take pride in your accomplishments. Look around you and remember your fellow graduates. Look at the campus. It is changing and will be changing ever more over the next few years. Be sure to thank your parents family, friends, husbands, wives, children, employers, professors, anyone who helps support you financially and spiritually, anyone who poked and prodded you until you achieved your goal. Then take the time in the next few days after the celebration is over to think about all of those who came before you, all the students, teachers, and administrators who helped to ensure that Towson offers now what Towson offered over 30 years ago when my husband and I were students here, an affordable, accessible, quality education. 
Then remember all of those who are following you here at Towson. It is up to all of us to make sure that Towson continues to offer an affordable, accessible, quality education. We owe it to our children, our grandchildren, our community, our region, our state, and ourselves. Your reputation rests in Towson, and Towson's reputation rests in you. Knowing that you are a Towson University graduate conveys so much about you, and you convey so much about Towson. Do it with class. Again, on behalf of the Board of Visitors, I congratulate you. And one more piece of advice, use sunscreen. Thank you, Mrs. Schock. We are also fortunate this afternoon to welcome Mr. Keith Iwancio, Vice President of Towson University's Alumni Board, who will bring words of welcome and congratulations from the Board of Alumni Association. Please welcome Mr. Iwancio. Thank you, Kevin, and good afternoon to all the members of the class of 2013 and your guest. As Vice President of the Executive Committee for the Alumni Association Board of Directors, a proud member of the class of 1994 and a 2007 graduate of the Human Resource Development Master's Track from the College of Liberal Arts, I am honored to be here today to represent the more than 133,000 alumni who have graduated from this remarkable institution. Each of these alumni has a story to tell about the success that they have achieved as a result of their education here at Towson. My own story would not have been possible had it not been for the education, the experiences, and the connections that I made here at Towson. You too, all of you, will have a great story to tell, one that you will be proud to share with future generations of Towson graduates. Your story actually starts today as you join 3,444 fellow members of the class of 2013. This week, 2,684 of you are receiving a bachelor's degree, 742 of you are receiving a master's degree or certificate, and 18 of you are receiving a doctoral degree from Towson University. Congratulations. Your class is 68% female and 32% male. I know the guys are happy about that. <clears throat> the average age of undergraduate students in this year's graduating class is 23, and of graduate students is 30. The youngest graduate in the class of 2013 is Hannah Carr, who is receiving a bachelor's degree in psychology today at the age of 19. Congratulations. <laughs> And our most seasoned graduate is Andrea Gordon, who at the age of 70 is receiving her bachelor's degree in English. Congratulations again to both of you. The class of 2013 actually represents 24 out of our 50 states with New York and New Jersey having the largest number of graduates outside of the state of Maryland. Now, hold a minute. Just for the record here, 124 of you come from New York, but 206 of you come from New Jersey. Nine of you are actually the sole representatives from your home states. For those of you who are receiving your master's degree today, we know that 23% of you, just like me, also received your bachelor's degree from Towson as well. So, a second congratulations to all of you. We also know, I think that deserves a round of applause. We also know that this class was very engaged and very active 
as a majority of current seniors and graduate students participated in either an internship or experiential learning experience this past semester alone. Additionally, members of this graduating class were involved in intercollegiate athletics and a variety of co-curricular activities. All of this while still maintaining an average class GPA of 3.35. Well done to all of you. We also know that now upon graduation, the majority of you will stay right here in the state of Maryland because on average, 73% of TU alumni call Maryland home. Although our alumni here at Towson live in every state and 82 countries worldwide, perhaps you will join the one of 6,000 alumni who will marry a fellow Towson alumni or that you will become one of the 1,000 alumni who actually come back to their alma mater in either a faculty or staff position. Today, you become the newest faces of the Towson University Alumni Association. We are educators, actors, doctors, business leaders, lawyers, computer analysts, scientists, politicians, healthcare providers, human resources managers, and much more. Towson University alumni live in every state from California to New York and New Jersey, and 82 countries from China to France and everywhere in between. As alumni, we feel that it is our responsibility to give back so the future generations of alumni will have the same experiences and opportunities that we had here. So, once you walk out of these doors today, remember that while your time here at Towson may be over, you will always be a part of the Towson family. The Alumni Association will help you stay connected to all of us, and we look forward to hearing about your accomplishments and your successes. On behalf of the thousands of alumni who have preceded you, it is my privilege to congratulate you on your outstanding achievements. The rest of your story is yet to be written. In the months and years ahead, please be sure to share your story with us as you make your special mark as a Towson University alumnus. Again, congratulations on this very special day. Thank you all. Now, if I'm not mistaken, both the youngest and the oldest of our graduates are both from this college. So I want to take a moment. If uh, Hannah, if you're here, would you stand up? And Andrea, are you here? The there they are. 19 and 70. Now concerning alumni, I'm going to ask that if any of you in the audience are Towson alumni, and you also are parents, grandparents, or great-grandparents of these students, please stand up and let us recognize you. I now call upon Mr. Kuttner again to introduce our first student speaker. It is now my pleasure to introduce our undergraduate speaker, Ms. Lisa Marie Shanty, who is graduating today with a Bachelor of Science degree in Psychology with a minor in Family Studies. Lisa was born and raised in Baltimore and currently lives with her family in Perry Hall. She was accepted to a PhD program in Applied Developmental Psychology at University of Maryland, Baltimore County, and will be starting there in the fall. Please give a warm welcome to Ms. Lisa Marie Shanty. Thank you, Kevin Kuttner, Vice President of SGA, for that introduction. 
Good afternoon, President Lusky, Regent Slater, distinguished guests, honored faculty, family, and last but certainly not least, fellow graduates. I'd like to begin with one of my favorite quotes that takes on a new meaning as we graduate today. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Henry Ford's words came to mind as I thought of what I could do or who I could become when I arrived at Towson as a timid freshman in the fall of 2009. I never imagined that I would be selected to address my fellow graduates in the College of Liberal Arts four years later, nor did I ever imagine that I would have the courage to face my biggest fear, public speaking. Prior to today, I would practically need to be sedated before I spoke in front of crowds. But in the wise words of my 10-year-old sister, don't worry, no one is listening anyway. <laughs> Despite my fears, here I am addressing an audience of thousands of people having accomplished more than I ever thought possible. Each of us has achieved something here that we did not think we could. Among the lessons we have learned is that our ability to succeed lies in our belief in our ability to succeed. And our belief in ourselves is usually shaped by the people who believe in us, the people who bring out the best in us. I came to understand the significance of this concept during a community service experience. Over the last few years, I volunteered in a variety of settings, met many different people, and heard many different stories. One story in particular stands out. A young girl I met at a summer camp for children with disabilities told me that she once struggled with thoughts of worthlessness. She wanted to just disappear or run away. She imagined that no one would even notice she was missing. One of her mentors helped her change her perspective. She encouraged the girl to abandon the negative thoughts swirling around in her head, telling her that she wasn't good enough. Instead, she should focus on the fact that she was at her happiest when she felt that she deserved happiness. The idea that our happiness depends on our willingness to believe in ourselves resonates with me to this day. It is not just about happiness. It's about all the good things that come to us through hard work and reframing our perspective. In addition to the belief in oneself, what else does it take to succeed? The psychologist in me is fascinated by this question because it touches upon so many psychological themes. The most important one for me is that we are not alone. We are a social species and we do not thrive in isolation. Just as the young girl I met was influenced by her mentor, I too have experienced the value of inter interdependence and teamwork. Before I became involved in research in the Cognitive Development Lab, I had never worked with such a dedicated group of undergraduate and graduate students. They gave new meaning to the term research team. As I worked on my senior thesis, I spent countless late nights in the lab, read dozens of research articles, spent hours trying to make sense of my data, and consumed an absurd amount of caffeine. What kept me going? The supportive group of students and faculty who offered me unparalleled professional and moral support. Beyond the lab, I developed very close bonds with psychology faculty. I am truly indebted to these professors who saw in me what I never saw in myself. I hope that I will be for others what my professors and peers have been for me, that I will be a supportive role model. It is my hope that each of you has found at least one person in the College of Liberal Arts who helped you to realize your dreams that believed in you enough and encouraged you enough for you to succeed. As graduates, we have already achieved a great deal of success, but I hope that in the future, our greatest success will come from advocating for the success of others. After all, changing the world begins with finding the good in other people, lending a helping hand, and leading by example. Commencement, as the word denotes, is a new beginning, the first day of the rest of our lives. There are a few who think they know exactly who they are and exactly where they are going. Others are still exploring and continuing to learn about themselves. Regardless of which category fits you, keep in mind that dreams may change, but success will ultimately come if we believe that it will. When we think we can do it, we may even astound ourselves with what we are able to accomplish. As an aspiring developmental psychologist, it is only fitting that I enter the very popular yet still motivating quote from the one and only Dr. Seuss. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact. And remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft and never mix up your right foot with your left. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Congratulations to the class of 2013. We made it. Thank you. Ms. Shanty. Good afternoon. 
I'm Lisa Jackson, the president of the Graduate Student Association. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce the graduate student speaker, Ms. Soraya J. Abuhaja, who is graduating with a Master's of Arts and Humanities. Soraya is a native of Baltimore. She earned her Bachelor of Art, cum laude, from Loyola University, Maryland, before entering the graduate program in the humanities at Towson University. Beginning fall 2013, she will be pursuing her doctorate in literature and cultural studies at the University of California, San Diego, where she was awarded the prestigious San Diego Fellowship for demonstrating a commitment to diversity and to the advancement of underrepresented communities in higher education. Please help me welcome Ms. Soraya J. Abuheja. Thank you, Lisa Jackson, for that introduction. Good afternoon, President Lusky, Regent Slater, distinguished guests, honored faculty, family, and fellow graduates. All of us, and I mean all of us, are dreamers. Too often, dreams are ridiculed or dismissed as either frivolous abstractions or as meaningless sentiments printed in a Hallmark card. But in defense of dreams and dreamers, let me just say that dreams are a reality waiting to be created. As Master of Arts graduates, we all came to the College of Liberal Arts with dreams of creating new realities for ourselves and with passions to fuel those dreams. When I earned my bachelor's degree in 2009, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had studied art and I wanted to be an artist, but I had no idea what that really meant. As so often happens to the best of us who find ourselves in that limbo following the undergraduate years, I dabbled in a number of different things. I worked a couple of different jobs, I went abroad, and I read and reread the kinds of books that I never really appreciated when I was in college. It wasn't until I entered the graduate program in the humanities in 2011 that I discovered what it really means to be an artist. Art, like all acts of creation, must be driven and fed by passion. True passion is the vehicle by which dreams move. Passion is the spirit that feeds dreams and moves the dreamer to create. If the natural sciences are concerned with the body and the physical world, then the liberal arts are concerned with the mind and the spirit. These two elements have always moved me and inspired me, shaped my dreams, first in my creative and now in my scholarly endeavors. I think it's fair to say that all of us from various graduate programs are engaged and concerned with not only discovering what it means to be a human being, but also with interrogating that being. We evaluate and reevaluate our place in the world, both by asserting and then challenging the ever-evolving definitions of our humanity. My passion for the human eventually evolved into a passion for the humane. This passion is what had shaped and informed my master's thesis in which I had analyzed the acts of multiplying an individual and of transforming collective identities through literatures produced across national, cultural, racial, social, and linguistic borders. By the time I completed the thesis, I realized that what I was essentially studying were the dreams of people just like you and me who imagine a better humanity. I too dream of ways in which we, as members of the human race, can create better ways of being in the world for ourselves and for one another, be it through psychology, the social sciences, gender studies, art history, or the other disciplines that comprise a diverse curricula of diverse studies, of graduate studies in the College of Liberal Arts. It is this dream, fed by my passion for humanity, which will continue to move me and inspire my future work this fall as a San Diego Fellow in the doctoral program in Literature and Cultural Studies at the University of California in San Diego. But as we all pursue our dreams, we should remain faithful to the values at the heart of our graduate education in the College of Liberal Arts as follows. First, engage with everyone, even those that disagree with you. Disagreements are merely a testament to the richness and diversity of the human experience. Second, never lose sight of or fall out of touch with your own voice. Remember that your own voice has gotten you this far, and just imagine how much further it'll take you. And third, and most important, Always look for the human subject beyond theories, statistics, and objective measures. Let the human factor inspire you and move you towards the betterment of humanity. The art of a liberal education is mastering the art of living in a world that is constantly in flux, constantly changing. Like any art, it takes practice and inspiration. Most importantly, it takes dreams and dreamers who are passionate about reshaping the world in which we live. The liberal arts, like all arts, are about creation. Therefore, we must always remember that we are all artists because we are all dreamers who imagine a better humanity and who have learned how to lead the way towards a new reality, wherever it may take us. Thank you and congratulations, everybody.
Commencement is one of the happiest days on this campus for all of us. And the reason is probably because we have invested with our love and our attention and our mentorship into your journey these last few years, and we could not be happier for your success. There are many who share in your accomplishments, but I want to uh, recognize one group right now who deserve great recognition. We have one of the finest graduating classes in the country because we have one of the finest faculties assembled anywhere. So I'm going to ask them to stand and let you say thank you to them. Faculty, please stand. Also joining me on stage today are leaders of the university, those responsible for facilitating your academic and, and student programs, and again, your success. Now, you may not see them every day like you do the faculty and the staff, but I can guarantee you that behind the scenes, they are passionate about what happens to you at Towson. I'm going to introduce them on the stage. Hold your applause, please, until the end, but please stand. The vice presidents of the university and the members of the leadership team, the Dean of the Honors College, the Dean of the College, the Dean of University Libraries, the Associate Dean of the College, members of the Board of Visitors, the Alumni Association, the University Senate, the American Association of University Professors, the Towson University Staff Council, and then members of our Student Government Associations. What a group. It is a joy for me to work with them every day. Thank you. You know this is a university of thank yous, so we're going to continue here for a bit because I wanted to thank the faculty marshals. Now, you saw them today when you were robing. They helped you with your hood. They told you where you needed to go. They gave you lifesavers and safety pins and stuff like that. But the reason why they did this is because they wanted to be a part of this ceremony. And so they volunteered to do this. And I'd like to thank all of the faculty who served as student marshals, faculty marshals, and also the readers for this ceremony. Please stand up and let us thank you. You. There are over 100 people that work on this ceremony. The commencement committee, of course, and students, our facilities, police, bus drivers, food service, photographers, event staff, medical staff, custodians, parking, and volunteers. It's a huge job to put on this ceremony. And there is a second group that worked on this particular ceremony. A week ago, we weren't really supposed to be in here. Uh, we didn't have a lot of things that would have made you comfortable in here. Well, it didn't look possible, and the electricians and the welders and all of the folks around this facility said, oh, yes, you will be in there, and you will be very comfortable, and we are here. So please, let's thank both of those groups. Now, class of 2013, you are going to go down in history as the first class to graduate from this space. So when you come back here for your 50th reunion, you can say that. <laughs> now we're going to thank the last group and graduates. I think you know who that's going to be. We're going to ask you all to stand up in two groups. So the first group is knowing very well that these students are not on this journey alone. We're asking the parents, the grandparents, and the great-grandparents in the audience, please stand up and let them thank you. And we thank you for leaving them in our care. Now the next group. Now let's hold our applause until the end. It'll be easier that way, but we're going to ask the following to stand up. You are the brothers, the sisters, the spouses, partners, sons and daughters, the aunts, the uncles, the godparents, cousins, 
friends, stand up and let them thank you. Madam President, this concludes the undergraduates from the College of Liberal Arts and all graduates for this year. The class of 2013! Now just one more minute, if everyone would sit down, just for a moment. 2013, Class of Liberal Arts, I'm going to ask you that sometime this weekend, in the midst of all of the celebration, please sit for just a moment and quietly reflect on how you're going to use this education to make positive change. This is a very difficult, challenging world right now, and the world needs you. It needs your passion and your talent and your commitment to humanity. As your president and someone who sat in a Towson commencement just like this many years ago, I can tell you that anything can happen. Your journey is going to be exciting. And I send you forward with tremendous love and pride and gratitude and respect. Now you're going to move out of this arena and begin the rest of your life. Thank you so much for everything you have given to Towson. Now this makes it very official. You're going to stand up and move the castle on your mortarboard from the right to the left. You are graduated. <clears throat> now everyone, please stand and join Mr. Engel in the singing of Marilyn, My Marilyn. The words are on the page 63. The president, her party, the faculty and graduates will begin the recessional. I would ask that members of the audience be seated until all have left the arena. The guests may then join their graduates outside in the Tiger Arena courtyard. Again, we offer our best wishes and congratulations to the class of 2013. Way to go, graduates. Way to go.